Hello and welcome to Reinfuse. Today we are taking a look at this, which is the Funtech Super Akan. Yeah, it's a <laughs> interesting name machine, and its name is part of the issue with this machine. So this is a Taiwanese-made machine. It was released exclusively in Taiwan in 1995. Uh, yeah, as I said, by Funtech, or the Dunhuang Technology Company. And one of the big things with this is that people are just constantly play it off as being a Super Nintendo ripoff. Uh, and it's not. I kind of understand where they're going with it in terms of the styling. If we just move this, give ourselves some space over here and bring in a Super Famicom. You can kind of see where they're going with the styling. This is obviously a bit beefier than the Super Famicom. But yeah, with the, where the cartridge slot is, where the control buttons are yeah there is obviously some uh, resemblance to the overall design but it takes an awful lot away from what this machine is and this machine is an its own entire platform it really is it's got it's based on the Motorola 68000 so it's um hardware wise it's, it's got more akin to the Mega Drive than it does the Super Nintendo it's got its own graphics chip uh one of the UMC ones in fact UMC is a name that will come up quite a lot in the construction of this machine there's a very good reason for that uh Funtech was owned so it was it, it went bust <laughs> not long after this came out for uh reasons we'll get into in a minute uh UMC is United Microelectronics Corporation, and they, they did kind of specialize in making, I think it's safe to say, clones of other people's chips, because that is a lot of what they did. Although they, did, they didn't just rip them off, they did tend to make improvements as well. Like they made in, versions of Intel CPUs, which had extra features and, and fixes to overall designs and stuff. And so a lot of the chips in here are versions of other chips that were released by... Uh, UMC uh, as clones, and so uh, the, the graphics chip is is one of them. So it's a little unfair to say this is a this is a rip off of the Super Nintendo. Certainly, it's inspired. I mean, the controller especially actually <laughs> certainly bears uh, at least a passing resemblance to um, the Super Nintendo one, if if not only in the button layout. But uh, yeah, it's it is its own machine with its own games. It's it's a, it is an important thing to remember. Now it uh, it didn't succeed. There have been a few theories on why it didn't succeed, but some of them don't make much sense. Like the one is price, but it was about two thousand nine hundred new Taiwanese dollars when it came out, which is not a huge amount of money actually. It's a hundred pounds, give or take, when you work it out. So. It wasn't massively expensive for a 16-bit console, even when it was released. <laughs> this is where we get to the reasons why it actually failed. So reason one, it was released in 1995. If you know your history, the 16-bit era was over at that point. The uh, PC Engine came out in 87, the Mega Drive came out in 88, and the Super Nintendo, Super Hong Kong, came out in 1990. So... At this point, when this came out, we were already looking the photo bit era quite firmly in the face, and we already had the PlayStation and uh, 3DO, etc., etc., out in the market. So that's kind of reason one why this failed. Uh, it didn't get a lot of support from people, although again, various reasons for that. The timing being one, what's the point of making 16-bit games when there's a photo bit console out there? It's only a Taiwanese console. We didn't have much chance going anywhere else because of the age again. So why would you make it? But also there was the political environment at this point. So Taiwan is uh, part of China, and they're very protective of Taiwan. Especially, I think we'll get we'll say without getting into any specifics. You can look that up. <laughs> but also another facet of China at this point is that they were not very keen on video games. They saw them as being kind of a, a gateway to uh, insurrection and uh, they really cracked down on them, which is why we saw in later generations Nintendo getting around that by partnering with local companies to release variations of the Nintendo 64 over there. We've done a video on that actually, which I'll link in. So that and also cost as well. This cost a lot to produce because, I mean, there was no real video game environment for them to work with. Uh, so they were making games and also the hardware themselves. And 
that basically took Funtech out of the game and uh, they went bust not too long after releasing this console. So, I mean, those really are the reasons why it was massively unsuccessful. The price, I don't think, really factored into it too much. So the machine itself, yeah, as we've seen, we have obviously our cartridge slot up here, which is nice. It's got a couple of, if we can get a clear picture of this, let's see a couple of locking things in there. So when the power is on, it locks the cartridge in place. Actually, if we look at one of the cartridges, uh, which are even rarer than the machines, uh, understandably, we can see uh, on the cartridge there's actually uh, a couple of grooves there where we can lock the cartridge in so it can't be removed when power's on or inserted when, or inserted when the power's on, in fact. So uh, that's a good bit of design. Then we have, uh, obviously, yeah, the nice big chunky power switch, uh, an eject button to eject the, the cartridges and uh, a reset button at the front. We have two uh, Atari-style joystick connectors, uh, which is kind of nice, obviously. It's uh, nicer than having some big proprietary thing. And on the side, we have an expander slot. I do actually have the cover for this, which I will now put on. The thing is, this cover feels like the brittle plastic that's definitely going to break if I try to uh, <laughs> remove it whilst doing a video. So I took it out in advance. But there you go. So we have that. It's, it's not, yeah, it's, it's a very snug fit. <laughs> <laughs> I think this design, um, yeah, possibly uh, wasn't the greatest in the world. Anyway, on the back we have uh, an RF uh, connector. We have our we have our power adapter there, and we have composite outputs. It's not a great quality picture coming out of this thing, but you know it's good enough. And yeah, so if you have a look on the bottom there, we got. Funtac a can model UMCF, so obviously United Micro Electronics Corporation, uh, F001. <clears throat> yes, I had a model number, so did they intend to bring out more? No, well, maybe, but not originally, but they did intend to bring out a couple of peripherals for this. So the expansion slot we've just seen, that was uh, going to be apparently uh, have uh, a mega CD style connector for it, so it would have CDs. And they also plan to bring out a 32X style uh enhancement for the top so even though yaka say gets that comparison with the super nintendo it does look like they're rather more looking at, at sega's business plan than anyone else's yeah so we have our manual here which is uh it's kind of nice it, this also resembles quite heavily the super famicom style of manual so again you can see where that comparison comes but it really it, it's just really face value so yeah it's all very uh very clear diagrams are out there. I mean, can't read any of that, but I can definitely understand what it's saying. And yeah, there we go. So we have our, we have the, the specs there. Have a look at that. And there's that GPU. It's the UM6618. So, uh, one of those UMC chips. Uh, yeah, so the specs are, they're not bad. For the time, obviously, they were, but <laughs> for the market it was aiming at, they, they weren't bad at all. Yeah, there were 12 games released in total, of which I own two of them, because, again, they are not cheap to get a hold of. So I have got uh, this, which is called Various Things, C-U-G, Journey to Laugh, or Journey to Laughter, one of those. And this is like a, a platformer-style uh, game. They, yeah, they're quite nice and colourful. I don't mind them. And, uh, yeah, this is one boxed game, which is Son of Evil, which is a kind of Zelda-esque role-playing game which uh, it's all right. It's competent. They're both competent, to be fair. They're, they're also quite hard games as well. There are also uh, 11 planned but unreleased games, although a few games, and include some of the released games, did end up coming up on other platforms, especially the PlayStation and uh, the Mega Drive got a few of the unreleased games as well. So, yeah, some of the games did make it out to market via other uh, publishers, uh, I'm, well, I'm assuming via UMC at some at, in some way. Right. Well... It's a console, so I guess the important thing is this, uh, to have a look at some of the games. Obviously, I own two of them, so we'll be able to see two of them. <laughs> Right, so here we are. This is a Journey to Laughter, and so it's very, it's nice and colourful. Uh, moves really well. There's very little, if any, lag. 
And you can see it's just, um, it's a very nice, whoa, hello. <laughs> it's a really nice little platformer. Uh, well, tell you what though, it is hard. <laughs> Oh, fly me. <laughs> but it's nice, the animation is nice. It's nice, it's a nice, oh, hello. <laughs> Straight down the hole. Now we've already done a video on this, so we won't spend too long. But the one thing we do have to see is the special move. Because the special move is definitely special. Whee! Yeah, there's a, several of them as well. There's um, also a giant one where some giant woman appears. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's an interesting game. But I say we've already done a video on this, which I'll link in. So, but let's uh, move to the Son of Evil instead. So here we are with Son of Evil. I don't understand what any of this stuff says, but uh, it looks certainly suitably epic <laughs> for it to be a, a Zelda-style game. All right, let's, uh, let's jump into this. As I said, yeah, this is a, a top-down adventure game. Um, it's heavily in Taiwanese, so yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if this had been released in the properly in the 16-bit era. This would have done okay. Um, just, yeah. <laughs> Not quite so much when 3D graphics were becoming the norm. Right. See if we can skip into the game. It begins much the same way as many of these games do in the bedroom. <laughs> and then someone... This is so cliched at this point for this type of adventure game. <laughs> Right, so now we can go on our way and uh, yeah standard fair we can just search through stuff there we go <laughs> even handily tells us how much it's worth I think it may not be saying that who knows but yeah it's it's, it's pretty enough for its uh for its generation, not for the gen again, not for the generation it was released in, but for the generation it was designed for, it's pretty enough. And there we go, we can go and talk to everyone and hunt for all their stuff. Although we can't steal the food off their table. But we can just rifle through all their bedroom stuff, which is good. Staple of every role-playing game, surely. But yeah, it's um it's a pretty game. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's got uh it's obviously a very derivative graphic style, but absolutely fine for this kind of uh this this, this era of console. Fine. <laughs> okay, well the super can is very hard to get a hold of. But if you I mean yeah, it's it's hard to say get one. For the very simple reason that it will be expensive, the games are expensive, and none of, the, none of them are particularly great games. There are some okay games. Jones of Laughter is an okay game. This is an okay game. But then some of the better games are also available on our platforms anyway, and there's nothing here that says you have to own it. In terms of if you're a rabid collector, then yeah, I can understand the appeal. More do seem to be popping up, because one of the things with this console is that a lot of them were sent... Un, like as parts to America to be sold at for separate things. Not entirely sure exactly how that worked, but it does seem to mean that a lot of these consoles ended up being in America and either being reassembled or just arriving as a whole unit. Not entirely sure how that worked, but it. So there, occasionally you do get a few that come onto the market, and this. Um, I think this is where my one basically came from. So. They are re reappearing. They are being sold for very, for high prices. If you wait and you're patient, you can get one for a reasonable price. Mine was comparatively reasonable. 200 pounds 
doesn't sound reasonable, but uh, compared to some of the prices people try to sell these for, it was. Mine wasn't boxed, but it did come with all the manuals and everything. Uh, no power supply, but I wouldn't have trusted it anyway. So I'm just using a universal power supply uh, at 7.5 volts um, at center negative, which is the important thing to remember, not center positive. Be very careful with that. Um, the games are really hard to get hold of and people really are gouging the prices for them. Uh, some people will tell you some games are rarer than others. That is complete rubbish. This wasn't out long enough for certain games to be more available. Most of the games that came out came out at the same time with the same number of made. So no game should be rarer than any other, but people do still still try to sell other games for being inflated prices and claim that they're rarer. They're not. Uh, Son of Evil boxed. I got relatively cheap again because I put an offer into somebody and they accepted it. Uh, Son of um, Journey to Laughter I got moderately cheap, but they're more expensive than the box Son of Evil because, again, somebody uh, was, it was, wasn't was selling on eBay because rare isn't the same as sought after. <laughs> Uh, and I managed to put an offer in and, and it was accepted. So, yeah, if you really want one, be patient and, and you'll be able to get one for a, at least a relatively reasonable price. Right. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, please hit like. If you really enjoy the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't enjoy the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. See you next time.